seen some effects of the recession lately that you have I've affected seen a you directly? I've seen a tremendous amount of effects. Right now, almost 90% of our business is export. Almost all of my U.S. customers are buying nothing. So if it wasn't for export, our business would, would be out of business. What do you think some of the solutions to that problem might be? Well, I think we need to tra change our trade policies in this country, actually have an industrial policy to encourage um, investment within our country as opposed to having that investment be overseas. I think that's a big problem for a lot of these other people here because there's no jobs. The reason there's no jobs is, for example, in China, they have a 22% tariff on my goods when I send them over there. They have to pay 22% tariff. In addition to that, the Chinese, the Chinese currency, the yuan, is about 30% undervalued according to the Financial Times of London. So before we talk about anything else, they have a 50% built-in artificial advantage. So how can we have free trade when one of our trading partners has a 50% artificial advantage? Happy hour. The hedge fund is going to be gone. Yeah, My hedge fund is fucking cold. awesome, so it's awesome. <laughs> now you know they outsource a lot of jobs. You know that. Your hedge fund's going to China. My hedge fund is going to China. They're better, man. You know how many geniuses are in China? Come on. They're smart people. The question, it's the questions that we need to ask, right? How is money created? How is it distributed? You know, what are the rules that govern its management and its movement from one sector of, a, of, an econ of the economy to another? These are all political questions. Why do you think the Federal Reserve Bank issue is an important one to talk about? Well, I, I think uh, it's clear to me that the Federal Reserve actually violates uh, the U.S. Constitution and the provision on the uh, granting of titles of nobility. It was clear, Alexander Hamilton wrote in the Federalist Papers that the, the prohibition of both the Congress and the states on granting titles of nobility would make sure that we had nothing other than a Republican form of government, meaning we wouldn't take things that that duly belong government run and hand them over to private interests to wield that power for themselves. In the Federal Reserve, we have done that with them. We, we have handed them the power to originate money and decide how to do that, and also to profit, at least in part, from the origination of that money. What have, what have been the effects of that handover? Well, they, uh, they basically are a big fuel. They fuel the speculation in our, most of our uh, financial markets. By pouring money into the secondary treasury markets, they draw in what the con artists call the suckers, who then come in and bring their money because there's new money going into the securities market. That'll also spread over into the stock markets and other uh, the bond markets and other bond markets. And so you get this financial speculation fueled by them. Right today, they are serving as the strike fund for capital. Capital doesn't need to hire workers because the Federal Reserve is providing their strike fund. They're originating money and they're pouring it into the financial markets. And they can, the, the, the financial market, those in the financial markets can simply draw their incomes and cover their needs like you do during a strike while uh, the Federal Reserve just keeps it running. And it's an infinite strike fund, no end to it. Uh, it really is a, a, the power of nobility that they've been handed in contradi you know, contradiction to what our Constitution requires. Why, why, why should the man on the street care about the Federal Reserve issue? Why, how is it affecting the man on the street and his pocketbook? Well, and, the, and the woman on the street, of course. Well, this, it creates an enormous private privilege, basically. And that private privilege creates other, other privileges. And you basically recreate feudalism right inside our constitutional republic. What I would like to see happen is a total peaceful transition to a better system. I, I'm not sure what that might be. Maybe pure democracy, maybe socialism. It doesn't matter. But um, I don't think that's going to happen. It's going to be it's going to be pretty tough. Um, you know, the one percent don't want to let go of their grasp on the entire political system. Uh, it's it's going to be kind of hard. I mean, I've heard I've heard really bad rumors about you know new riot tactical vehicles with this this technology that uh, blows out your eardrums and things like. Like that, and I don't know. I just, I, I, I personally think it's going to be, 
it's going to be hard, but uh, you know, we're going to get through it, and, and nothing can stop this revolution. This movement is so big right now. We have thousands of cities worldwide. Uh, you know, even, even Israel had 7% of their population out on the streets protesting social grievances. It wasn't necessarily an Occupy uh, movement following Occupy Wall Street or any of those, but it, it was social grievances, and it was, you know, for the overall revolution, in my personal opinion. So every, every, every single city in the world who's doing an Occupy movement, everybody in Egypt, um, you know, Israel, just, just let's, let's become aware, let's all educate ourselves, and let's continue to progress in uh, this, this worldwide movement that's just exploding and expanding, and, and let's continue.